Welcome to this edition of The Silicon Grapevine. I'm your host, Nitin Dahad. In this episode, I'll be talking to Sami Chung, CEO and founder of Ephinix. In 2022, Ephinix celebrated its 10th anniversary since being founded and moved into new offices in Cupertino. I caught up with Sami a year later at their HQ in Cupertino to chat about his journey uh, from getting into the industry at Cypress Semiconductor and then Altera to what drove him to starting his own FPGA company. We talked about what excites him, what he's proud of and the challenges of striking the right balance as a founder CEO. So let's go straight to my chat with Sammy. Sammy, hello. Hello, hey Nitin. Welcome here today. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, I'd like to just uh, ask you a little bit about um, what uh, you're up to. What, what do you do? What's the company do? What do you do? Avenis is a PGA company. Okay. But we have been um, so innovative that our technology brings us so much success for the last few years. Mm-hmm. And we are in a fast growing stage. I mean, even everyone knows that we are in the middle of some economic challenges. Yeah. And um, But um, we are extremely busy mm-hmm. and um, keep getting interest in our product, our technology. Yeah. And um, our partner customers are super excited about the vision that we, how we change the dynamic, not just the FPG industry, but the overall how we build the ecosystem. So as a result, I'm extremely busy, but extremely excited. Now, uh, last year, I uh, think you had celebrated uh, the 10th anniversary. Yes. Uh, how's that journey been? Uh, it, it, was, it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, be frank, I mean, as someone normal uh, start with as an engineer, right? Yeah. I mean, in the old day and 10 years ago to start a company, never dream about that the company become true. And actually it's more than true. It's extremely successful. And um, a, a lot due to, I mean, the people surrounding us, how to build us there. I mean, we keep some promise last year, how we grow and we exactly even beat the promise, how much we grow. Mm-hmm. And um, so uh, it, we are super excited exciting in terms of the journey uh, uh, follow through from what we had in uh, talk about in the party. What was your thinking when you uh, decided to start a, a company? What what made you start? Um, uh, well, I, I think it's somewhat uh, every individual had sort of some naturally different, although we all maybe perhaps either train as an engineer, train as a doctor, but uh, someone like myself, I think um, it, I, I will always look for things to do better mm. and always look for sort of like problem solving. Yeah. And um, at the same time, I think maybe because of personality, I, I managed to hang out with some really talented friends. Okay. I mean, it, it cannot be done just, just done by myself. Mm. So, and uh, also have certain natural skill set that identify saying that oh, these are good things to do. So when we start, we, we want to make things better. And at the same time, we work in the FPG industry, semi industry for a long time. Mm. We know exactly what the problem solved. Mm. So, uh, but without like too much worry, and we, we want to give a shot in terms of start a company. Mm. Uh, we did set an expectation, not as high as what we are seeing today. Mm. And we went through so much trouble and so on. But one important skill set brought us here is to be persistent okay. and to be caring about everything. When time comes, when the technology is real, when the people is real, result comes. Uh, that's excellent. Yeah, you come from the FPGA industry of year, so it's a very small industry. Yeah. So I guess yeah, like you know everybody, and everybody knows you. Uh, what's the feeling in that industry right now? Because uh, there's a lot of change, a lot of transition. People are looking for bigger, bigger thing. Yeah, you know, complexity of chips and all that. Uh, how how does the FPGA industry make it relevant, and how's that sort of do do for you? Uh, no, I uh, first of all, anyone in the FPG industry right now are super successful. Okay. I mean, all the other bigger companies, uh, and they, 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 they do extremely well, build really great products mm. and so on. And um, however, I think, as I mentioned many times that uh, everyone was founded on a technology which was developed 40 years ago. Mm. So uh, it's magnificent in terms of optimizing operationally, technologically, and financially, mm. right? I think, but that leaves some room in terms of opportunity for a new technology to come in. Right. And so the, the way I look at it is 
Um, existing FPG company will be continue to be successful at their natural growth rate to mm. serve the industry in a grand scheme. Mm. It's not going to go away. Yeah. However, I think the biggest assignment is our technology is not aiming to replace them. Mm. But the, the, the fact is the new design, new technology, including edge computing and better AI, things that need to be have the best specification, but the best value, the industry needed. So what, what we are seeing right now is um, the way we grow business is start seeing that we go into a socket, we solve a problem that none of the other existing device can serve the spec. Mm. The spec that's including power, performance, of course, the value. Mm. And then at the same time, how easy to use. Right. So we start seeing that it, it is not like I'm replacing someone or has a competition. Yeah. And we are very excited, exciting about that. But the, the fact is, is, what's the percentage of that? I mean, last year we talked about that on paper. Yes. But now I'm seeing that in a single digit percentage of the opportunity and design win. Mm. We go in there, there's no other anything. doesn't matter, microcontroller, special processor. So we are crafting out a new way that uh, open up a much larger business than traditional FPGA. And of, of course, at the end, whatever we win will be kind of as FPGA market. So <laughs> Exactly, exactly. I yeah. think uh, you did mention the tables and when we met last time. Last exactly. Year, right? um, what, what, are there any stats you can share in terms of your success over the 10 years? Uh, or the now 11 years, I guess. Uh, uh, I, I, well, first of all, the first five years is, trust me, right? Me and my co-founder partner, Tony, yeah. we were engineers. Yeah. We're fundamentally conservative, yeah. right? We don't go out and talk about like, something we couldn't do. So we, yeah. we, we really focus on developing technology in different stages to prove it in terms of certain things. Mm. And so we develop a very lovely technology that can in software and everything. Mm. But I think the transition point, the stat is the transition point in like the, the sixth year, we yeah. decided in terms of how to challenge ourselves to take what I call just good enough input funding to build the first product line, right. which is uh, the first successful Tron product line. I don't count a number, as of today, we probably sold over 30 million units. Okay. Over that, and then we march in towards that, and then the next milestone is 50, and then 100 million units. But the crazy part, another milestone is, during the COVID year, 2020, um, we also kick off our 16 nanometer titanium. Okay. Uh, it is very natural, is in a way that Tron is a or you can use the easiest use FPJ, but titanium is the most elegant, best spec uh, device built on 16 nanometer. Right. And that's the one that you walk in the market. Yeah. It's, sorry to say that it's a TKO of other components. <laughs> you don't have the spec and value to compete with us. We are excited. The okay. only drawback is we still need to work very really hard to get our name out. Yeah and also to get a reputation out. Mm. And um, so those are kind of statistics. I, it, we can talk about revenue, mm. all this stuff, but yeah. last year was a great growth. Yeah. This year, I, I bet everyone knows a bad economy. So anything less negative is a good thing. <laughs> so that's what we are doing right now. Okay. Well, and uh, so, so that, uh, we're very excited about that. No, I always see the enthusiasm in you whenever I meet you. So I think uh, it's good to see that uh, yeah. uh, for the industry as well. Um, Let's go a little bit about you. Uh, so, when when did you start in 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 the industry? And was it into FPGA first or something else? Well, the when is the secret, right? Okay, all right. Let's forget the when. Let's forget no, the no, when. No, 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 no. Sort of like, I, I, how did you start into the industry? Then? No, it, it's very simple. I mean, it's just a normal student that um, I, I. I mean, one of the thing is, I could do many things. Yeah. I have choices. I mean, yeah. I could go for a medical school and I could be an architect and I could be a physicist and um, even engineering. I was doing pretty well in mechanical, chemical or whatever, right. but I chose electrical. Yes, I, I think there, there are certain things connected and 25% um, will be just pragmatic that electrical engineering can get a good job at the time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think that there's a lot of connections in terms of ability to, at that time, it's not computer science, it's computer engineering, it's, it's really yes. a lot of chance to create new things. Right. And um, I'm particularly good in hardware, and then also with a good software concept and so on. I, I think it that's the choice naturally, mm. and I did well. And um, 
after college, I, I, I think I have choices, do many different things, that, but I was very lucky to be recruited by um, a Cypress Semiconductor, oh, okay. which yes, started my right. career, yeah. solid foundation, solid principle, mm. everything. I mean, Mr. T.J. Rogers set up a, a strong principle to do things well. Yeah. And, and then uh, life is just, it, 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 once you start with something good, and then you, you got another company called Altera. Yes. And then, um, uh, frankly speaking, I wasn't trained to like encourage like what is FPJ. Um, I'm still a very generalist, yeah. understand everything. But I'll tell you, like my background in terms of understanding semiconductor, be able to have a good discipline. And then I, I joined a company, and I, I was excited. I, I as, as a young engineer, I mean. The only goal is like I can do anything, I can solve any problem, so people like it. Good so, quality for a CEO and a founder. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's the second part of it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, so so it's good. I uh, basically I am not going to be my my mission is I'm going to nickel and dime saying that I should be paid this and that. I, I try to do different things hmm. and uh, I I great get great opportunity from great people in terms of different product line. Right. And different opportunity. They even sent me to um, Malaysia to start a completely new organization. Right. And right now is a foundation of the, the, the which is now Intel I and mean, plenty of engineers over there. Mm. And also when I step in Malaysia right now, everyone knows about me and so I mean, all these are great things and coming mm. back they even give me an opportunity to run a one of the most challenging product line called hard copy. Mm. And uh, long story short, we did a good run, and um, we made the hard copy product line to be one of the most scariest to our competitor at that time. My investor signing is now AMD, so it was a great memory. It right. was a great memory. Uh, uh, just like life, just like anything, and uh, not too young, not too old. <laughs> and um, I got good friends like Tony. Right, I mean, he's a true innovator. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I always say that I'm just an agent for him. Yeah. He is the guy, right? He's right. the guy really bring the technology. Yeah. And then I have an honor to be able to help him to think about what to do. Yeah. As a, so at one point, 2012, yeah. 2012, I think that is a clock is ticking. I think we should try. Uh, at that time, I was sort of like, I, I, I left Altera for four years. I was working with another really great startup, but startup is hard, right? So, but I indeed, I learned a lot of things from the startup. So Tony said, I mean, it's time, let's give it a shot. Okay. So we start a company. So the step is kind of like yeah. pretty natural. That's right. And, and also um, very grateful that we had a chance that it's not like that year, I, I guess some room to play. Yeah. It's not, if I have totally constraints, if I have a big family, but at that time I probably would not Try yeah. to do, but of course, actually, actually, this is like the first year after my first son was born, and then I even go to do a startup. So, uh, but anyway, the first five years, now I can kind of glorify it, <laughs> but actually, it's very tough. Yeah. And uh, uh, but but very grateful. So I, I told the whole company that ten years, innovation brought us here, and we all everything work hard experience is kind of different. Yeah. And then innovation brought us here is true innovation, true disruptive technology. And then now we settle here and then what's next? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think by analysis, I can see the future in a way that uh, it, it is fascinating. So yeah, as you can see, my background is all over the place. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, you talk about future. What excites you? And I'm not just talking about FNX, but what excites you about the industry uh, today? Because it seems like we have such a high profile, uh, more mainstream now. Simple, industry is waiting for change. Mm. My customer already, not directly, but clearly indirectly sharing with me that they are bored uh -huh. and irritated by existing ecosystem. Okay. Right, so I mean, don't go, don't went too far, we already forgot COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about supply shortage. Yeah. I mean, all my customers kind of like, what's going on? I mean, you, you cannot supply, but you jack up the price, everything, but you're selling me a product that is 30 years old. Right. And I cannot innovate. Uh, oh, this is our business. And then everyone is looking for new things. Okay. I mean, that's of course polite. They want to build relationship and so on. But deep down inside there, the, I'm talking about Semi, I'm talking about the people above mm. us, mm. right? The, the software guy has a boom time, but right now they're constrained by hardware innovation. At the end, it's time to market. 
Right. Right. So, and um, now a roller coaster saying that supply and zoom coming down, and the industry is like, uh, you need to take all the inventory. <laughs> Oh, so, okay. so everyone is frustrated. So okay. I, 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 that's why I tell my board member, they were laughing at me. It's like it's, every time Sammy say it's a good time for evidence. So this is the best time for evidence because people are looking for change. Okay. During a, a great grooming time and you have a lot of money in your pocket, uh, just be safe. I pay three eights, take four eights the time I can get my product. Yeah. No, no. I believe that, look at this, every single CEO, CFO of customer, partner, everything, they probably go to the engineering procurement and say, are you getting my best value? Okay. Yeah. So, and, and coincidentally, that timing is great for us and we get the great technology. Although part of the portfolio is not deep, but yeah. people appreciate that. Some of the frustration forced people to talk to us and they were impressed and they were very forgiving in the fact that we are a small company. Hmm. I mean, we have a lot of defects being a small company. All right, it, it's not like I have a, super glamorous software or yeah. like have 20 people trot in the room as Salesforce, but, but we are doing fine. I, okay. And we are excited about the industry change. That industry need changes, especially they need better performance, better spec and better value. So basically open opportunity for change is what excites you right now. Absolutely, it changes. Okay. Yeah. okay, that's interesting. And um, what's the most, uh, the thing in your life and your career that you're most proud of that you, you'd like to sort of uh, say, well, I did that. Two things. Yeah. I say the most, but I can't kind of like do two stages. Yeah. I mean, life is as a CEO, I talk positively. Yeah. I mean, life is not that easy. You get up and down, every one individual will share that fun, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I think we managed to pan through it, not as an individual, but as team mm -hmm. and the people surrounding us, you know, not yeah. the side out inside the company. I, I think that that part it's what I like, but I think going forward to the future, it's kind of like if this company has only that potential, maybe an M and A event we already done, right? Yeah. Right. We drinking wine on the beach or something okay. like that. But yeah. I think it's just so good. What that means is the amount of responsibility is can be seen. Yeah. But I like to embrace it because the other part of my life, I mean, it's um, it's I I, I have family, I have friends, yeah, and. My challenge, I'm telling myself, is not like I, how, like, it is, I work 20 hours a day, yeah. and then seven days a week. No, I, I think it's how to strike a successful balance mm. and be able to build that along the way. All right. So, um, so that's, that's a challenge. It's, it's impossible. I, I, I saw a lot of successful CEO. I think they're super dedicated. I mean, the t taunting tasks ahead of them. Mm. But I have to find a way to do that. I, I think the, the the only way is a philosophy that I believe is just what's driving the company too. Okay. And, and, and we can touch on it. It's basically, it, it, it's not a one-man show. I mean, you have to build a team, a partnership, an ecosystem. Yeah. And that philosophy also shared together with our business philosophy in Ethnics. Good. Well, Sammy Chung, thank you. Oh, thank you. The industry is waiting for change. Hmm, what a thought from Sammy Chung. That was the Silicon Grapevine. I'm your host, Nitin Dahad, and we'll see you on the next show.